And it came to pass, after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joah and his servants with them, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. Because David had his soldiers tearing up everything in his life. The Lord had gave it to him. Now David, he decided he's going to stay at the house, right? He cooling out, drinking on some wine, <laughs> laying back like a king. And this is what he decided he wanted to do. Check this out. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass in an evening time that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. Uh -huh. And from the roof, he saw a woman washing herself. So first thing David, oh, oh man, what is going on? He see a woman washing herself, right? Instead of him turning around going back to the bed, he's sitting there watching. Go ahead and read. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Uh -huh. And David sent and inquired after the woman. So what David do, he sent somebody to go get the woman. Go ahead and read. And one said, is not the... Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? So the brother said, wait a minute. Ain't this Uriah? I thought this guy was a man out of God's heart. Ain't this Uriah's wife? What he sending for her? Go ahead and read. And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in, uh, and, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. So how did all this start off? By him looking, didn't it? And then Satan just manipulated his mind. Next thing you know, he was jumped out the window without a parachute. Go ahead and finish reading that. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. So you think the Lord was going to hide this? Uh-uh. She going to have a baby. So what David did, he sent for Uriah. You know, and then he going to ask, hey, man, how the battle going? Well, everything's going all right. Well, why don't you go on head home and uh, take this food with you? So instead of Uriah going down, with, with his wife, he stayed at he stayed with all other brothers at the at the king's house and slept on the floor. So then uh, David heard that he didn't sleep on he, he didn't go into his wife. So he said, "Come on up, man." He got him drunk, lifted and everything, right? So you know when a brother get drunk, he going home. He thinking about his wife all the time, right? So then he he decided he wasn't gonna go down there. So then David said, "Well, man, I got to get rid of this because it's gonna be no." So David had a brother put in the front line and kill. Believe me, David paid for that. He sent Nathan the prophet to him, and the Lord told David, you know, man, I would have gave you anything you want. But I'm letting you know you're going to pay for this. I could have killed you, but this, I'm going to pay you for this. Now, that sword going to be in your house, and it was in his life. You know, you know, he had one son lay with his daughter. Then, then he had one his son take over the kingdom for him for a while. You going to tell me the Lord didn't put that sword in there, man? But there are consequences when you sin against God. So I'm just trying to show you there is something wrong when you start looking. Because Satan will manipulate your mind and cause you to do things that you should not do. Because first of all, Satan got you looking at him like that. Let's go back to uh, Matthew the uh, fifth chapter. We're going to pick it up at verse 31. Matthew 5, we're going to pick it up at verse 31. 5 and 31. Go ahead and read. Read that a little bit right there and we're going to slow down. It has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. And there go that writing of divorcement again. But go ahead. Jesus is going to make this plain. Go ahead and read. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her, that is divorced, committeth adultery. So in other words, you cannot get rid of your spouse without them going outside that marriage. And that's no way around that. No other way. Let's go a little further. Because you got to walk in this word. You have to keep that law. Because when you walk in this word, it's going to keep you away from doing committing adultery and all those things. Let's go to uh, five, because, you know, these brothers, sometimes brothers, they just, man, they think wrong. Uh, Proverbs 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Proverbs 5, because you got to have the word of God, sisters and brothers. you got to walk in the spirit of God, because that is the only thing that's going to protect you from adultery. Proverbs 
Proverbs 5 and 1. 5 and 1. Go ahead and read. My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding. So in other words, you better listen to God's word, because his word is your wisdom and your understanding. Go ahead and read. That thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. And that is what the word, it gives you knowledge. It shows you how to operate. Yeah. Go ahead and read. For the lips of a strange woman drop as in honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. Because you got some sisters out here talking smooth stuff to you and just have to take all your money. <laughs> Go ahead and read. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Go ahead. Her feet go up down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Go ahead. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. You don't know this sister. This sister come out of nowhere on you. She take you by surprise. And if you ain't girded up in the word of God, she will get you. Go ahead and read. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Lord, constantly tell you, don't depart from my word. Because you get caught up with this, you're a done deal. Go ahead and read. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Lord said, you better get away from her. And don't you dare go by our house. Don't go in there and fix the sink. Because <laughs> you ain't going to get out. Go ahead and read. Lest thou give thy honor unto others, uh -huh. and thy years unto the cruel. Go ahead. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. Go ahead. And thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. Go ahead. And say, how have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof. Because you hate instruction when you deal with this kind of stuff. You know, because there's a lot, a lot of beautiful sisters, and they do not have a godly mind. And brothers, if you are working and walking in the word of God, that is their job to destroy you. So you got to be careful. Go ahead and read. And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to them that instructed me. Because that is what you, you're not on, on, uh, obeying uh, the Lord, the people that the Lord instructed you to do. We teach you not to commit adultery. We teach you not to commit fornication. But you haven't obeyed that. Go ahead and read. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Uh -huh. Drink waters out of thine own cistern, and running waters out of thine own well. In other well. words, you just deal with your woman. Right. You deal with what's yours. Don't mess with nobody else. That woman outside the house, she don't belong to you. Don't deal with her. Go ahead and read. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad and rivers of waters in the streets. Uh -huh. Let them be only thy own and not strangers with thee. Go ahead. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. No, you rejoice with the